Welcome to Perspectives today. My guest is Ryan uh, Tatry, and he is the executive director of the Kanye Human Resource Center, and he's been doing it for a, about a year, Ryan? Just about a year, yep. Now, when you took over that position, I bet you uh, didn't consider what was going to be happening with the pandemic. <laughs> if you did, you deserve a prize. Yeah, I should go to Vegas if I knew that one. Was <laughs> so, yeah, so give a little, little background on yourself and, and how you became director and all that. Okay, um, so I actually started out my uh, uh, my time at the resource center uh, on the board of directors. Um, I was there probably uh, five years on the board. I was president of the board for probably about three years. And then when <laughs> Debbie Newcomb, the previous director, um, decided she was going to leave, um, we had a lot of conversations about who was going to take over the position. And it was kind of deemed that I probably had the most hands-on in the building, knew what was going on. A lot of the staff knew who I was. And um, so it just kind of fell into place that um, – that I would go ahead and be the next director, um, and it's been a you know quite an adventure so far this first year, and um, you know obviously with COVID and the changes and the things that have had to be made, um, it's uh, been stressful at times, uh, but we're working our way through it. It's probably a good idea that somebody with a little knowledge of the Human Resource Center, a little more knowledge, uh, became the director because I mean this would be difficult for anybody getting through the uh, what's going on now obviously the 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 two sides to this you know the the regular operations the center center's been around for over 40 years uh here in Conneaut and we've had um you know we have our three major programs which is the right track which is the kids after school program the seniors together program and then obviously the food pantry um those are our signature programs but we have so much going on inside the building <laughs> Uh, with Signature Health being now uh, the health um, GED program. Um, we have, you know, just a lot of civil service meets there. There's a lot of organizations in town that utilize the building, not only for the clients, but also just for general business that they have to take care of. Um, it's kind of a one-stop shopping, and uh, it's been around for a long time, and I would imagine it's going to be around for a long time long after I'm no longer the director, so. Well, there's a definite need for it, so as long as yeah. there's a need. Sure, and that, and that <laughs> I mean, ideally, we would like to not have families have hunger issues and, and difficulty getting food, but, um, you know, the way it is, I just actually uh, attended a meeting, uh, let's see, probably a couple of weeks ago um, with the Alice Report, which is about um, people, it's kind of the working hungry of, of Asheville County. And it's people that they make, they have a job, they work and make a certain amount of income, but with rent and all utilities and expenses that they have, they're still unable to um, maintain all their bills. And usually food is one of the ones that gets hit first. Um, just because it's flexible, you know, you're, you, I could eat steak one week, but next week I'm going to have hamburger. You know, there's a lot of different things that you can do with food to try and make the dollars uh, go a little bit further. So when people are struggling in their budget, oftentimes, you know, the food pantry helps out and subsidizes those families. But back to the two sides of the center. So you have all the operations side of it that it, in a normal environment a new director coming in, basically, you know, they've got to learn all the programs and all the things where our funding comes from. Um, and then you throw in, you know, after I'd been there, uh, let's see, it was probably four months um, by the time COVID rolled around. Now we were faced with, okay, all the programs that we have, how are we going to maintain them? Yes. And, and a big thing for us in, in Kanya, we have a lot of our funding come from the social organizations that do um, the Ohio lottery gambling tickets, the bingo tickets and stuff like that, they're actually, they are required to donate to nonprofits in the area. So we receive quite a bit of funding from those gambling proceeds. Well, as soon as they closed the restaurants and the bar, we knew we were going to be struggling um, because we relied, you know, pretty heavily on a lot of those donations. And so we did have a layoff for a little bit. And then with, uh, the PPE loan, we were able to bring 
bring most of the employees back and we've been working you know through the summer we did the summer food program with a lot of our regular staff you know we served over 12,000 meals this summer to the kids for the summer food program so we were able to do that because we brought our staff back and put you know put them to work on that program because like the seniors the senior center ended up closing down where we weren't allowing seniors in the building so i have staff that were maintaining the senior program we just moved them over into the summer food program but now we're actually moving in the senior program into hopefully what's going to become a virtual senior center um where we're going to have a zoom account okay where people seniors from home are actually going to be able to log in play games listen to speakers do programs and things um from their home so it's going to be a it, once again it's a huge transition of something that we've never done before um and we're you know kind of winging it but at the same time i think you know we've done things this year that uh you know, the, the produce day, which is the first Monday of every month, we've actually been able to do this all in the parking lot where there's very minimal contact with people. And it took me about two weeks to develop a plan um, of how we were going to do it. But that first Monday of the month, we get about 12,000 pounds of food. And in two hours, we're able to stock up people's cars and have virtually no contact with the public. But that that um, used to the, the people used to walk through the human resource center picking stuff right, up. Right. Yeah, we'd end up with you know three hundred people inside the building standing shoulder to shoulder, and they'd be going through picking out stuff that they wanted. And um, now we don't do it anything that resembles that at all. Um, so it's been kind of you know the transition is you know I have a background um, in EMS and 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 keeping that contact of you know airborne particles and stuff like that and having the experience of what we need to get through that um you know and having the health department i i spend a lot of time in uh, nichelle blood's office going over plans of how we're going to do things she's um, her office is in your building too yeah so, yeah, so, yeah yeah so that comes yeah, in which handy. Is, you know advantageous you know because i could just walk down the hall and say hey you know i got this plan for this what do you think mm -hmm. and you know we kind of look at it and she gives me you know recommend oh we need to kind of maybe change this a little bit and you know we just had the voting was a big issue for us sure you know, we had to figure out a new way to get people lined up in the building and have them come in one exit out a different exit you know they've done voting there for years and all of a sudden this year it was turned up virtually upside down and we had to do it totally differently so well um, can we get back a little bit to the seniors too though because you're talking about uh, virtual meetings and stuff but they're they're used to meeting having social time and speakers and you know, lunch and all five days right. a week so how's that impacting them right now well obviously i mean there has been uh, you hear a lot of stories about the increase in depression and suicide and all kinds of things among the senior community um, because you've had the seniors literally who were going out every day and being social went uh, you know into their homes that have been there for six seven months now um, so there it's a it was it's been a huge change for them and very frustrating I get you know, calls weekly about, you know, hey, what's happening? You know, are we ever going to open again? And I think now I don't get as many calls because the numbers are actually going up and everybody's kind of going, oh, no. I, I think I am going to stay in. Yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> um, so for a while there, when number we had kind of contained things, um, I was getting a lot of phone calls, but now the numbers are going up. So everybody's, the phone calls have kind of stopped and they've realized, oh, I don't think I'm going to be allowed in the building, you know, for a while. So, um, yeah, but that virtual setting, I, I, I'm, I'm excited about it because we're going to be able to probably open it up to some seniors that maybe have never thought about being a part of the program um, and they can do it as they choose. You know, they can basically sign on if they like the speaker and like what's going on. Um, you know, maybe they'll come tomorrow or the next week right. there's a different speaker or something like that. They so could be in Florida different. and do it. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's, and this is, it, it kind of came up because I was wondering when I first started working on the program of making it virtual, I was trying to figure out why we haven't done this in the past. You have seniors in the program that they may go into the hospital for a cup for a surgery and they're going to have a couple of weeks worth of rehab we've never opened it to them to be able to participate virtually. Mm -hmm. And 
I thought, you know, this is that we should have been doing this for years. The, right. the, the idea that a senior, when they're, or if somebody falls and breaks a hip and they're now bedridden and they're never going to make it back to the center, why are they not allowed to be able to participate? from home or you know at least say hello and the way zoom is set up and you can break out into different right. rooms if you have three or four people that want to sit and talk about something you can put them off in their own room and they can enjoy each other's company sure. you know during that time so um it's a great tool i'm looking forward to, re- to really using it to its fullest potential um and hopefully I, I'm really hoping the seniors are going to benefit from it. Um, and it's just going to be a matter of, you know, so a little bit of hardware and some technology and some things that I'm still purchasing. And uh, I'm hoping after we're, we're going to try here the last couple of weeks of December, just do some trial runs where we're just going to, you know, kind of throw some uh, numbers out onto the website and have a couple of people join, not really do long programming but i just want to work out some of the bugs and sure. hopefully after the first of the year we should hit the ground running and i think the programming is gonna hopefully take off and and maybe you know if we get a really good speaker and we want to open it up to other senior centers in the county you know we can do that we can say you know hey this is open to any senior in ashtabula county not just the seniors for the county out area ryan so, tatry you know, is our guest executive director of the county human resources center so you said that your staff was helping with this. Does this mean that if uh, a senior is not uh, technologically talented, that you may go in there and say, "This set up Zoom and say, click this now when it's time for it or something like that? Well, we, we have been. That is going to be one of the sides of it that we're going to have to figure out, okay, how do we make this as easily available to them? Um, you know, and even now, I've had some conversations with the seniors. I have seniors that actually have internet access at their house, but it's actually because their grandkids go there after school Mm. and it's for their grandkids and the grandkids are, you know, when when school was was in session, they would go there after school. Now they're actually watching their grandkids and using it all day for their distance learning for the kids. Um, But a lot of them have internet access, but have never used it. Right. They don't, okay. You know, well, you know, they they have the access to it, but then there are a few that don't have access. I'm trying to create some funding to where we could do you know six month or year deals where they have hotspots set up, and um, so it's a lot of different things. But yeah, getting them the access to the Zoom is going to be that next step of making sure that okay, we have somebody here that wants to do it. Let me see if I can find a sponsor for them. We've only got about a minute and a half left. And before we go, I want to talk a little bit more about the food pantry because I imagine you're in need there. Can you talk about funding and if people want to donate? Sure. Um, So this time of year, we've actually in the past had a lot of, uh, you know, this is a great time. This past Tuesday was National Day of Giving. Um, And and we've been receiving a lot of donations to the food pantry. Um, And in fact, we've actually received quite a few um, truckloads. We actually received uh, uh, last week uh, 1,200 pounds um, wow. One organization. Uh, we've received uh, turkeys, and uh, you know, a lot of organizations in the area have been contributing, and we're getting those things out to families for Thanksgiving and uh, hopefully for the, for the holiday season. So we've um, got about thirty seconds. Can you like give us some how people can donate? Uh, phone number or address or that sort of thing. Yep. Um, so obviously, dropping anything off at the Human Resource Center, we can take our website has a way to get on there where you can pay through PayPal. Um, obviously, any check that you'd like to send in, 327 Mill Street here in Conneaut. Uh, if you have any questions about anything else that you might want to donate, you can give us a call, 593-5273. Okay, we'll try to get back to you maybe the first of the year and find out how all the virtual stuff is going on. Okay, that'd be great. Love to do it. All right, Ryan Tattery, the Executive Director of the County Human Resources Center, has been our guest today. Thank you very much. I'm Bob Lebzelder. I'm Bob Lebzelder on Perspectives.